Section 7, circles in the coordinate plane. Let's take a look at what this actually entails. Our lesson objectives are to write an equation of a circle and to find the center and radius of a circle. We're going to start right off the bat with theorem 717. And theorem 717 states that an equation of a circle with center at h comma k and radius r is defined as x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. All right, if we actually take a look at the diagram here of the circle, we have the center located right here and a point on the, of a circle, a point on the circle that says x comma y. So the this formula for the circle was derived using the Pythagorean theorem. If we actually take this line right here and they two, these two points intersect, it forms a right triangle right here and it gives me r squared using the distance formula. So that's how we actually get it. So this equation right here is known as the standard, the standard form circle equation. Circle equation. Okay. Now we're going to be using and seeing this equation right here quite a bit. So let's get started with our first examples. And the first example that we have here, example one, part A, writing an equation of a circle. So write the standard equation of circle with center located at 5, negative 2, and radius r. So if it's the center, we know that this is going to be h, this is going to be k, and this is going to be r. So we're going to be using the standard form circle equation. So that is not h, x. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So there we have that. So what we have to do is plug in those numbers. So we have x minus h. h is 5 right here, so we're just going to put a 5 right there, squared, plus y minus, but k is negative, so it's going to be minus negative 2, which gives me positive 2, equals r squared, but r is 7, so it's going to be 7 squared, and 7 squared is 49. And that is, and I forgot to put the square, so square right there. So there we have the standard form circle equation for this particular circle with center 5, negative 2, radius 7. Okay, now that we have that, you have part B for you to do. So as usual, I'm going to read the problem, and as soon as I read it, pause the video and see if you can set it up. And it goes, write the standard equation of each circle. Good luck. Okay, so in this particular case, and still, we're going to be using this equation, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. We know that 3 is h, k is 5, and r is 6. So we go ahead and plug those in. So we have x minus 3 quantity squared plus y minus k, k is 5, so it's 5 here, quantity squared, equals r squared. r is 6, so it's going to be 6 squared, which is 36. And that is our standard form circle equation for that one. For our other one, for number 2, we have this is h, this is k, and this is r. Again, we're going to be using the standard form circle equation. So we have here x minus, but h is already minus. So it's going to be minus negative 2. Minus negative 2 makes it positive 2 over here. Quantity squared plus y minus. But then k is also negative. So it's going to be minus 
negative 1, which makes it a positive 1, quantity squared. And then over here, we have the square root of 2, and we need to square that. So to get that, I'm going to write it over here. We know that the square root of 2, quantity squared, the radical here, the square root and the square cancel each other because they are inverses of each other. So this will just give me 2. If that actually still, uh, you're a little iffy about that, you can always say that the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 equals the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 comes out to be 2. So that's what this guy will be over here, equals 2. Okay, so r squared of, you know, the square of the square root of 2 is just 2, and here we have our standard form circle equation for this particular problem. Okay, now, moving on to our second example. Our second example states, using the center and a point on a circle, write the standard equation of the circle with center 1, negative 3 that passes through the point 2, comma 2. Okay, so let's take a look at what this will look like. We still are going to use the standard form circle equation of x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. All right. So we have the center. We know that we have the h comma and the k. And what else do we have? Well, if you notice, they gave us a point. And the point over here, this represents my x and my y at that particular point. My x and my y at that particular point, at this particular point, is 2 comma 2. So this will be x, this will be y. That means that the thing that I'm calculating for is r squared. I'm looking for the radius, in other words. In this particular case, r squared. So let's plug those numbers in. So the first thing that we actually take a look at is that we have, for x, we have 1. So we have, for x, actually, I'm sorry, we have 2. For x, we have 2 minus h, which is 1. That is going to be quantity squared plus y. y is 2, so it's going to be 2 minus, but k is negative 3, so we have plus 3. 1 and squared equals r squared. Then all we have to do is clean this up to get r squared. So we come up and say that 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'm just going to say just 1 squared. I'm going to just write the steps. Then we have 2 plus 3 is 5. Then it's, that's 5 squared equals r squared. So 1 squared is 1. 5 squared is 25. And then we have 1 plus 25 is 26, which is what r squared is. Now that we have r squared, we can write our circle equation. So once we do this, one step that uh, a lot of people have issues with is that they think that I need to put r squared over here, and that is the equation of my circle. No, that's not true. We need to actually write the equation of the circle in general terms. This right here tells me the equation of the circle at this point, only at that point. It's only valid for that point. But I want all points. To get all points, I need the general standard form equation right over here. So this is what it looks like. We just plug in the values for hk and r squared and let it go. So it goes like this. My equation is x minus h, which is minus 1, quantity squared plus y minus h, again, minus negative 3 is plus 3, quantity squared, and then we found out that r squared is 26, so 26 goes right away there, and this right now is our standard form circle equation for this whole circle that we have here. Okay, now let's take a look at one for you to do all by yourself so it says write the standard equation of the circle with center 2 comma 3 that passes through the point negative 1 1 
So give this one a shot and see what you get. Okay, now let's take a look at this one in particular. So we know that we have h comma k for our circle, h comma k for our center rather, and this over here is our point, which is going to be x comma y. Okay, so we're going to be using the standard form circle equation. So it goes x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So we just plug in what we have. So for x, we have negative 1. So we have negative 1. For h, we have minus 2 quantity squared. So then we have plus y, we have 1. That's going to be 1 minus 3. Quantity squared equals r squared. Okay, so then we have here negative 1 minus 2 is minus 3 quantity squared plus 1 minus 3 is negative 2 quantity squared equals r squared. So this gives me negative 3 squared is 9 plus negative 2 squared is 4 that equals r squared and 9 plus 4 is 13 which is what r squared is. Now that I know what r squared is, I can go back to my standard form circle equation and I can say that we have x minus h, which is 2, quantity squared plus y, let me actually make that x look a little bit better, x, y minus k, and k is 3, quantity squared equals the value that we just found for r squared, which is 13. And there we have our standard form circle equation for this particular problem. Okay? Now let's take a look at another problem here. In this particular case, we have when you make a call on a cellular phone, a tower receives that call. In the diagram, the centers of circles O and A are locations of cellular telephone towers. So the first part says the equation x minus 16 quantity squared plus y minus 10 quantity squared equals 100 models the position and range of tower A. Describe the position and range of tower A. This actually doesn't require a lot of math except just recognizing what the standard form circle equation is. So what we want to know is what is the what is the center of this circle and what is the radius. So we need to know what the center is. The center, which we know is going to be x uh, h comma k h h comma k, and we need to know the radius radius, which is r, okay? Now that we have that, we can go ahead and we know that this right here is going to be h over here, and this is going to be k over there, and this right there is r squared, okay? So first we can say that the center, the center is located at h. h is right here, and the standard form circle equation has already a negative here, so if that means that our h is just positive 16, comma, and then we have the standard form circle equation original has a negative already here, so that means that our k is just gonna be positive 10. And our radius, well, if r squared equals one, then I take the square root of both sides just to get what r is and r happens to be 10 because 10 squared is 100 so this the radius is 10 and we're going to say 10 units because usually this will be an equation in reference to the range of a tower will probably be in miles 
but we don't know if it's miles or kilometers or whatever the case might be. So just to cover our, our tails on this, we just call it units. Okay, so that's for this one. All right, problem two talks about a new tower is to be built at point B with, ra with a range indicated in the graph. Write an equation that describes the position and range of this tower. So we're going to take a look at, point, at circle B right here. Our center is located at 4, comma B, 4, not comma B, 4, comma 20, 4, comma 20. So our center, we're going to say the center, center is located at 4, comma 20. Now we need to know what the radius is, radius. So the radius, I'm going to say radius is, our radius now, First of all, we need to take a look at the scaling of our graph. And based on the scaling, each of the little squares here happens to be two. So I'm going to take the distance from the center to the circumference, and it's one, two, three, four, five, five little squares, and each of them is two. That means that our radius happens to be, move it over here, happens to be 10. Radius is 10 units. 10 units. So we apply that with the standard form circle equation, which is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So we just plug those numbers in and we get x minus 4 quantity squared plus y, let me write a better y than that, y minus rk, which is 20 quantity squared equals, and since our radius is 10, I need to square that 10, so I get r squared, so that it is, 10 squared is 100, and that is it for our standard form equation of that circle, circle B, and if you notice, both of those circles, the radius, notice the radius for circle A was 100, or actually radius squared, or the radius here, radius was 10 here, and it was also 10 over here. So because the radiuses or the radii rather of both circles happens to be the same or congruent, then that means that the two circles are congruent. All right, that's it for that problem, All right? So let's take a look at other problems that we can actually do with this. Part B is yours. Part B is actually saying to go ahead and find what would be the equation, let's see, write an equation that describes the position and range of tower O, tower O. So we need to find out what the range, what the equation is for that particular uh, tower. So for the particular circle rather. So give them one a shot. Let me actually bring the uh, drawing here so you can see what it is. So get, give that one a shot and we'll get back to it. Okay, so we see the circle over here, and we notice that in this circle, circle O, the center of circle O is the origin, right? If it's the origin, so we know that the coordinates of the center are 0, 0. The center is located at 0, 0, and then we need to know what the radius is. The radius is, I'm going to leave that there. We go back to the circle and we count distance from the center to the circumference. So we have right here from the center to this point is four units from this. Here. So we're going up by four. So eight plus four is 12. So my radius is actually 12. So the radius is 12. And then and guess what we're going to be using? You guessed it. We're going to be using the circle equation here, the standard form circle equation, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So we just plug those numbers in and we get x minus zero quantity squared plus y minus zero quantity squared equals 12 squared. All right, so then let's clean this up a little bit. So we have x minus 0 is just x, then we square that, we get x squared, plus y minus 0 is just y, and y squared 
is y squared. Then we have 12 squared is 144. And here we have a equation of the equation of the circle for tower O. And that's all there is to that one. All right. Now, this is four circles just looking at a graph and that sort of thing, but there is a skill that we can still use to find the radius and the center of a circle. And that skill is an Algebra 1 skill that you learned back in Algebra 1. There's another, it's another, it's a same skill that we're going to still see this in Algebra 2, but we're going to apply this skill to find what we need. This skill is known as completing the square. Usually you use this, this type of equation or this kind of approach rather to solve a quadratic. We have at least three steps or three methods to solve a quadratic. You can either try to factor, you can use the quadratic formula or you can use completing the square. So we're gonna use completing the square and here's how it goes. We have two cases for completing the square. The first case that you may encounter is that the leading coefficient of the polynomial that you have is one, positive one, okay? It is positive one. So let's take, let's take a look at this first example, number one. Notice that the coefficient of my k squared is positive one, right? Is positive k squared, so my coefficient is positive one. So that we're in good, in good shape right now. So the first thing that we want to do is move or isolate my variables to one side of the equation and the constants or the numbers, like in this case, this negative 62. I need to move that number to the other side of the equal sign. So what I do here is I would add 62 to both sides. The 62 goes away and I'm left with k squared minus 4k and I'm gonna leave a space there, you'll see why in a second, equals 62, okay? Now, to complete the square, I want to make this a perfect square trinomial, and you'll see why that in a minute. So what I do is I take this coefficient, the coefficient of my middle term, this negative four, I'm going to divide it by two. Negative four divided by two is negative two, and I usually write that somewhere there because I'm going to be using that in a little bit. I take that negative 2 and I'm going to square it. When I square it, I get positive 4. So I'm going to add 4 over here. But I just can't just add the 4 there and leave it as is because I have an equal sign right here. And if I add 4 to one side to keep that equal sign valid, I also need to add 4 to the other side. Okay? Now that I have this, and is perfectly balanced. Now I can see here that I have a perfect square trinomial and this factors, and the reason I left that negative two over here is because it is one of the elements of the factors that I'm gonna be using. So this would be k minus that two that over there, minus two times k minus two, and that is going to be equals 66, 66. Now, notice here that both of these factors happen to be the same exact thing. I can still rewrite this a little bit better, which is the purpose of completing the square. So here, I can actually rewrite this as k minus 2 quantity squared. And you're wondering, why is it squared? Well, the same thing happens if you have a variable like a times a, you're multiplying it by itself, right? So this a times a, wouldn't that be a squared? Well, in this case, I have k minus 2 being multiplied by itself. So I can write it as k minus 2 quantity squared, and that equals 66, right? Actually, that looks like a k point too. So I'm just going to write it again, minus 2. Okay, that looks up. A little bit better. So now from here, notice I have a squ uh, uh, squared. So I need to undo that using a square root. So I take the square root of both sides and that leaves me that k minus two, k minus two, minus two equals the square root plus or minus the square root of 66. Plus or minus the square root of 66. 
So once we have that, we can then go ahead and say that I take that two and I add it to both sides and I get that k equals two plus or minus the square root of 66. Okay, notice that this is actually two answers. We can actually leave the square root of 66 alone. Reason being is you cannot simplify it. And in these kinds of problems, you do not need to approximate the square root of 66. It's not required unless you are you are in need of finding out what that value is to a specification, like to the nearest tenth or something. But in this case, in general, these kinds of problems, you can leave them just like that. Notice that they technically are two solutions. The first solution is going to be 2 minus the square root of 66 or 2 plus the square root of 66. This is the reason you have always two answers in a quadratic is due to the fundamental theorem of algebra that states that whatever degree your polynomial is, that's how many answers you also get. Okay, so that is the solution for our first problem. Number two over here. So the first thing that I noticed is that my variables are not all on one side and I have constants on along together with the variables. So I need to rearrange this. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and add the 17 because I need to move it away. Add 17 to both sides and I need to subtract this 2v here and subtract 2v over there and clean this up a little bit. That 17 goes away. These 2v go away. And I am left with v squared minus 16v, 16v plus 64, actually not plus 64, that's later, equals 17. All right. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and do our operation that we need. So we have the middle term here becomes what? 16v or 16. The middle coefficient is negative 16. So I divide that by 2 and I get negative 8. And I put that negative 8 over there. I'm going to take that negative 8 and square it. And 8, negative 8 squared gives me 64. So if I add 64 here, I need to add 64 over here as well. So now that I have that, I can then go ahead and factor this left hand side which comes out to be v minus 8 quantity squared equals 17 plus 64 happens to be 81 and then what i have is that i take the square root of both sides and i have v minus 8 equals plus or minus the square root of 81 then I add A to both sides. I add A to both sides. And I have that V equals 8 plus or minus. The square root of 81 happens to be 9. So I have V equals 8 minus 9 or 8 plus 9. So 8 minus 9 is negative 1. Or I have 8 plus 9, which is 17. And there we have that. And that's the answer for that problem. Okay. Part B is yours to do. It consists of two problems. So give that one a shot. Solve the variable by completing the square. Good luck. Okay, so now let's take a look. First thing that we need to do here is we need to isolate the x's uh, from the numbers here. So from the constants. So we add 40 here. And we add 40 here, like so. Then we go ahead and write x squared minus 6x. Leave this space here. And we have this equals 40. Now that we have that 40 there, we take a look at the middle term here. We notice that it is negative 6. So we take half of negative 6. That is going to be negative 3, which I'm going to write right here. And then we take negative 3 and we square that, and that is 9. So we're going to add 9 here, which means we're going to add 9 over here as well. So now we go ahead and factor our left-hand side, and it becomes x minus 3. Write a better 3 than that. 
3 quantity squared equals 49. 49. And then we go ahead and take the square root of both sides, and we have x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 49. And that means that we have, then we move that 3 to the other side, and we have x equals 3 plus or minus 7. And that will give me that x is equal to either negative 4 or 10. And that's that problem. Number two, number two, as you can see, uh, none of the variables, well, the variables are not all on one side, neither are the constants. So we have to do some rearranging. And the way we do this in particular, we go ahead and we add the 51 on this side, and we add it here as well. And we subtract the 5n from this side and subtract the 5n from this side. And we have the 51 here disappears, the 5n here disappears. And we are left with n squared plus 8n, leave our space here, equals 51 minus 3 happens to be 48. So there we have that. Now our middle coefficient here happens to be 8. So that means I need to take half of 8, which happens to be positive 4, and then we square that and we add 16. 4 squared is 16, so we add 16 there. We add 16 here, and we go ahead and factor our left-hand side. This comes out to be n plus 4 quantity squared equals 64. Then we take the square root of both sides, we get n plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 64. And that happens to be producing n equals, we make an equal sign here, equals negative 4 plus or minus 8. Then what that gives me is that n equals negative 4 plus 8. Actually, let's make that negative 8 first. Minus 8 or negative 4 my, uh, plus 8. So on the left-hand side, we have negative 12. On the other side, minus 4 plus 8 gives me positive 4. And that's the answer for that. Okay? Now, let's take a look at case two. Case two happens to when uh, the leading coefficient is not one, when it's not one. So let's start with the problem here on ha at hand. It is set equal to zero, but if you realize here, we can do a little work before we even start. Notice that each of those are divisible by two. So we go we're going to go ahead and factor out the two. So let's factor out the 2, and we get 4m squared minus 8m plus 3 equals 0. Then we go ahead and divide both sides by 2, divide both sides by 2, and we are left with 4m squared minus 8m plus 3 equals 0. Okay, and now that we have that, we have the need to move the 3, right? Because we need to isolate the variable. So we subtract 3 from both sides. We are left with 4m squared minus 8m. Leave the space. And we have negative 3 here. So now I go ahead and factor out a 4 from these two terms. You notice that 4 is common between my first and second term. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. And I am left with, uh, let's see, m squared minus 2m. I'm going to leave this space, and this becomes negative 3 over here. So now that we have that, 
we're going to take a look at the polynomial in here or the binomial that we have in here. The middle coefficient is negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, which goes over there. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so we're going to add that 1 there. Now, we need to add a 1 there, but we need to add something else to the right-hand side, and it's not 1. It is not 1. Why is not 1? Because if you take a look, this 1 eventually is going to be multiplied by this 4 right here. So if I multiply that 4 times 1 is plus 4. So that means I need to add plus 4 right over there. That's the number that I need to add. So this now I'm going to write down and it's going to be 4 times the quantity of m minus 1 quantity squared equals 1, right? Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So we have that. Then we go ahead and divide everybody here by 4. And we have that m minus 1 quantity squared equals 1 fourth. We take the square root of both sides and we get that we get that m minus 1 equals the square root of 1 fourth. The square root of 1 fourth, we can use the quotient root of radicals. That tells me that this can be written like so. And the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. So um, this is plus or minus over here. I forgot to put that there. So we have m equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. We found out to be 1 half. So my answer is either 0.5 because 1 minus 1 half is 1 half which is 0.5, or 1.5, because 1 plus 1 half is 1.5, or 1 and a half. So there we have that one. Okay, for number two, number two, the equation is not set up equal to zero. But if we notice, each of those happens to be, happen to be factorable. But before I even do that, let me just move this negative 4x squared to the other side. So let's go ahead and do this. So we add 4x squared to both sides. All right, we have that. That goes away, and I'm left here now with 8x squared minus 16x minus 64 equals 0. Now I can see that I have a factor among all three, and that happens to be 8. So we're going to pull an 8 out of here, and we're going to get 8 times the quantity of x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Then we go ahead and divide everybody here by 8, divide by, by 8 over here, and we are left with a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, which is what we needed in the first place, and that equals zero. All right, so now that we have this, we need to go ahead and leave our variables alone by moving the eight to the other side by adding eight here, adding eight over there, and we go here and we get x squared minus 2x, we're going to leave our space, equals eight. Then we take a look at our coefficient, it is negative two, half of negative two is negative 1, so negative 1 squared is positive 1. We add the 1 here, which we add the 1 over there as well. And then we go ahead and factor our left side, and it comes out to be x minus 1 quantity squared equals 9. Then we take the square root of both sides, and we get x minus 1 equals square root, plus or minus the square root of 9. So I'm going to move this a little bit down. We have plus 1, plus 1, and actually, I'm going to go write it over here. We get that x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. So our answer comes out to be x equals 1 minus 3 is negative 2 or 1 plus 3 equals 4.
So those are my two answers right there. Okay? Now, let's see if you can do these right here. Part D, they're all yours. Both of these, solve, the ver solve for the variable by completing the square. Good luck. Okay, so now let's take a look at these problems that we have right here. So part D, now notice on the left-hand side, we happen to have a problem. It's already set up equal to zero. We don't have to do any moving except that 24. But before we even do that, we can see that each of these, the 8, the 16, and the 24 are divisible by 8. So I'm going to factor that 8. So we factor the 8, and we're left with x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0, right? We had to do something like this because our leading coefficient was not 1. Now it is. But before we do that, we can now divide both sides by 8 so, get, so we can get rid of it. And we are left with x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and isolate the x's and leave them alone by adding 3. So we add 3 to both sides. We add 3 to both sides, and we are left with x squared plus 2x, leave the space, equals 3. Then we take a look at our middle coefficient. That middle coefficient is 2. Half of 2 is 1. I'm going to put the 1 over there. 1 squared is 1. That means I add 1 over here. I'm going to go ahead and factor this now, and this becomes x plus 1 quantity squared equals 4. And then we take the square root of both sides, and we're left with x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 4. Then we subtract the 1, subtract the 1 from both sides, and we're left that x equals 1. Actually, this is going to be minus 1 minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. So in this particular case, we happen to have negative 1 minus 2 or negative 1 plus 2. So on here we have negative 3 or this is going to be minus 1 plus 2 is 1. And that's our answer for this one. Okay. Now, for our other one here, we can go ahead and notice that each of these numbers, including the one on the right, are divisible by 6. So we're going to go ahead and factor out a 6 from both sides. So because the leading coefficient is not 1, we're doing this. So we have a squared plus 2a plus 2a and this is minus 6, and this over here is negative 1 times 6. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and divide both sides by 6. When we do this, that 6 goes away, that 6 goes away. Now my polynomial here is a, of actually one, the coefficient is 1. So we have a squared plus 2a minus 6 equals negative 1. So now we go ahead and move that 6 to the other side by adding 6, adding 6, and that goes away. And this becomes a squared plus 2a, and that equals 5. Then half of 2 is 1. We're going to leave that there, plus 1, plus 1. And we factor this side, so we have a plus 1 quantity squared equals 6. We take the square root of both sides, and we have a plus 1 equals, equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Since the square root of 6 doesn't simplify, we can leave it like that. In these particular problems, we don't need to simplify beyond that. So we subtract 1, subtract 1, and we are left with a equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. And like I said, we can leave our answer just like this, unless you are strictly asked to find it to the nearest tenth, the nearest one hundredth, or you need to find it to a specific value or specific accuracy. So 
That is solving the square. Now we're going to take a look at problems solving the square as to as it relates to circles because completing the square will help us find the center of the circle and its corresponding radius. So let's take a look at how that works. Here we have a couple of examples and the first one says identify the center and radius of each. Now notice now that we have X's and Y's and it might look intimidating, but in reality, it is not as bad. The only thing is that we, instead of completing the square for just the axis, we're going to be completing the square for X and Y. So the pr procedure is virtually the same. So for this, I'm going to rearrange this equation so that I have X's together and Y's together. All right. And um, that's all I'm going to do on the first step so we can see what happens. So we have x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 20y plus 95 equals 0. Again, I have not changed the value of the equation. I haven't done anything except rearranging it. Now we're going to go ahead and move this 95 over here to the other side by subtraction. And we're, when I rewrite it, I'm going to be leaving the spaces so we can do what we need to do. So we have x squared plus 4x, there's my space, plus y squared minus 20y, my space, and then negative 95. All right? Now that I have that, I take a look at the middle coefficient of the x terms, and that is... 4. So half of 4 is 2, and I'm going to write that 2 right there. 2 squared is 4, so I add 4 here, which means I need to add 4 over here as well. Then I go to the side of the uh, y's, and I see that the middle coefficient there is a negative 20, and half of negative 20 is negative 10. I'm going to write that negative 10 there so I can remember what it was. And negative 10 squared is positive 100, so I'm going to add 100 here, which means I'm going to add 100 over here as well. All right? So now I'm ready to go ahead and factor both the x's and the corresponding y's. So we have here completing the square or actually factoring this becomes x plus 2 quantity squared plus plus y minus 10 y minus 10 quantity squared equals and then we have negative 95 plus 4 plus 100 gives me a positive 9 then I'm going to if you notice now if you notice now, we are in the standard form of a circle, which is exactly what we want and what is useful to us because now we can use the standard form equation of a circle so we can compare it. So we have x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So that means we have our h over here, our k over here, and this is going to be our r squared. So we have now compare. The original standard equation has a negative sign over here. Let me actually write here center because that's what I'm going to be looking for now. The center, which is a point. So if I have a negative in the original and I have a 2 over here, a positive 2, that means that my h must be negative 2 because a negative and a negative will give me that positive 2. So my coefficient here, my h is negative 2. For k, k here is negative. That negative matches. So that means that my k is positive and it happens to be positive 10. Right? So now I'm going to be looking for the radius. The radius is, if you notice, 9 is my r squared. So I can actually say that r squared equals 9. And then I take the square root of both sides. And that gives me that r equals 3. And we have found the radius and the center of our circle by using completing the square. All right. Number 2 right here, though, 
we actually do virtually the same, except notice now that as it is right now, the leading coefficient of my x's is not positive one. It is for the y's, but the x's are not. And that gets resolved once I rearrange my equation. I'm going to move the x's to the left to join the y's, and I'm going to get rid of that 268 and move it to the other side. So this will actually look like x squared, x squared plus 28x, leave my space there, plus y squared plus 18y equals, oops, I almost left my, didn't leave my space, equals negative 268. Now that I have that, I take a look at my values here, right? So I see that I have a 28 here, and that 28, half of 28, happens to be positive 14. 14 squared happens to be 196. So it's 196, that means I'm going to add 196 over here. Then I take a look at my y, and the y is going to be, half of that is going to be 9, positive 9, right over there. And 9 squared happens to be 81, so I'm going to add 81 here, which means I'm going to add 81 here. Then I'm going to go ahead and factor this, and I get x plus 14 squared plus y plus 9 quantity squared equals negative 268 plus 196 plus 81 happens to be 9. And there we have that. Okay, so now that we have this, we can compare to what equation we're going to compare it to. You guessed correctly. That is the standard form equation of a circle. So we have y minus k here, quantity squared equals r squared. So this is our h, this is our k, and this is our r squared. So we have our center is located at, we notice that the original equation has a negative. We have a positive here, which indicates to me that h is negative 14, negative 14. And then we take a look over here. We have a positive 9 here, and the standard equation has a negative, which tells me that this point is also negative. So as our center is located at negative 14, negative 9. And our radius is just the same amount of radius as our previous problem, because r squared is 9. So we can say the radius is 3. And actually, these are 3 units. And these are three units. And there we have those two problems right there. So, last problem that we have here is for you to do. So, take a look at those and see if you can get them for me. All right. Good luck. All right. So we start here by, first of all, isolating our variables again. So we have x squared, y squared, and all that good stuff. They're not together, and we have that constant of 222. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it uh, all together now. So it says x squared minus 2x. Leave the space there for my calculation. Then we have plus y squared minus 30y. If the space, and this is going to be equals negative 222. So we have that. Then we're going to take a look and see that the middle coefficient for my x's happens to be negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared happens to be 1. So we're going to add 1 here. That means I'm going to add 1 over here. Add 1 right there. And then we take a look at the middle coefficient of the y's, and that is negative 30. 
half of negative 30 is negative 15, so we're going to put the negative 15 here. Negative 15 squared happens to be positive 225. 225 right there. That means we need to add the 225 also over here. And then we can go ahead and factor our x's and y's respectively. For x, we get x minus 1 minus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 15 minus 15 quantity squared equals and then we, we combine here, we have negative 222 plus 1 plus 25. We get that that is equals to 4. And we compare these to our standard form equation of a circle. So we have x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals 4. Not equals 4, pardon me, equals r squared. And now we can say, all right, our center, if this is h, this is k, and this will be r squared. So we have for our center, our h happens to, the sign matches, so that means that h is positive and is positive 1. When I, when I compare our y's, or our k's in this case, we have minus k here and minus 15, so the sign matches. That means that k is positive 15, so our center is located at point 1, comma 15. For our radius, our radius here, r squared, r squared is 4. So to get our radius, then we take the square root of that. The square root of 4 is 2, so the radius is 2 units. That's that for that one. And our last problem. Our last problem here, we take a look and notice that none of our leading coefficients for our y squares or x squares are positive one. But that is of no concern because we can actually either multiply everything by negative one or we can rearrange by addition the whole equation so that the x's and y's are on the other side and it will work out nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange it so it looks how it needs to look. So it looks something like this. We're going to have x squared x squared minus 22x minus 22x we're going to leave our space then we're going to have plus y squared minus 2y, leave our space, and this is going to be equal to negative 106. Okay, now that we have that, we can go ahead and take a look at the middle coefficient of our x's. It happens to be negative 22. Half of negative 22 is negative 11. Negative 11 is squared, happens to be positive 121. Oop, it's 121. 121, so we add here 121. Then we take a look over here for the y's. The middle coefficient of the y's is negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, so negative 1 squared is positive 1. So we add 1 over here. Then we go ahead and factor these, and we have here that it is x minus 11 quantity squared plus y minus 1 quantity squared equals, and this is going to be negative 106 plus 121 plus 1 happens to be 16. So again, we're going to compare it to what? Yep, by now you should know what it is. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So this is our h, this is our k, and this is our squared. So our center. The center is located here in this case. Again, it's a point. And we have our signs match. So that means h must be positive 11, and it is. And for the y's, the operation here on the standard equation is a minus, which matches this one, which means that k is positive 1. 
and then we have the radius, and the radius happens to be, well, the square root of 16, which happens to be 4. So the radius is 4, and there we have that. So that is it for this problem. This is pretty much how you use completing the square to find the center and radius of a circle. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, or you can contact me through Teams, and I'll be more than happy to actually help you out. Please stay safe, and we'll talk to you next time.